Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good day to everyone. So our topic today will be discussing about the how artworks uh, contribute to society and humanity. So before I move on uh, further with the topic, I would like to look at my previous uh, previous topics. Uh, my last and uh, my previous topic was on uh, why art is significant or so importance to humanity. And uh, at the early topic, I mentioned about uh, the definitions of art. Art is the expression and application of uh, of freedom and uh, art well art is the freedom imperative which is equally important to the survival imperative of uh, the society and also the humanity and i did remark uh, about the importance of art as equally important with uh, science and technology and i see it as uh, i see art as a uh, as a agent or medium uh, for politics, for economics, for social religion, uh, which is uh, which is the same as also science and technology, uh, they were also used as uh, mediums, mediums for uh, the surviving imperatives, uh, and art was used as for the freedom imperatives of the society and. If you talk about uh, artworks, so any object so has a, a maker, and any artwork has the the maker or the creator, whether it's an artist or the artisan, and that uh, artist or artisan is a human, and that human has uh, a freedom imperative, and he belongs to a, a wider, a bigger structure, a social structure of society. And his actions and behavior, his attitudes are uh, a part of the whole existence, emergence and development of the history of humanity. So uh, art itself, artwork itself is a part of the whole development of society and also humanity. So uh, David, David Jones, he was also an artist. He also wrote that uh, there were two significant uh, characteristics of behavior of human beings, which was the, the use and the sign. So the use was anything that he remarks as instrumental, and the sign was anything extra, uh, extra utile, which I see as that uh, the instrumental part was the what I see and understand what the instrumental part was uh, part of the the survival imperative. I mean, in any society, uh, the technologies and science was a part of the surviving uh, imperative. Uh, we, we did say that um, after the Industrial Revolution, uh, we revolutionized a lot of things, as for example, per se, medical was not better than medical before revolutions transportations and communications were even better so on one side it was actually a part of the survival imperative and until today we bring our handphones or communication items or application uh, appliance i mean everywhere it's a part of the survival imperative but there's a, another side of that which is not uh, just used for in an instrumental way but also beyond that what he calls us extra utile and I see it as the freedom imperative which is important and the freedom of a free person in, uh, in a society or, or part of that humanity as a humankind uh, acting as one unit or the building blocks part of that society uh, managing a lot of communication technology medical technology advancement technologies in uh, information system which these person ought to be uh, freedom ought to have uh, a freedom of 
themselves in whatever aspect uh, it governs, whether it's political or economical, social or even religious belief. And in Charles Chadwick, Charles Chadwick, uh, he wrote it on his book on symbolism, and he even uh, mentioned about the signs, or the extra utile, or what we call as the, or what I call as the freedom imperative. He writes that there are three categories, uh, particular elements of signs or symbols, uh, he, as he was writing about symbols. And he said they were conventional symbols, they were uh, accidental symbols and also universal symbols. And before we discussed how artists, uh, artists the freedom uh, to produce an artwork from ideas, from uh, objects and event, we can see that uh, it correlates. Uh, there's a significant uh, where ideas are very universal uh, in the way we convey that ideas and objects are very conventional and also events uh, in art are very accidental. And we've seen a lot of these type of art as we can see. Uh, in modern art, it was very, it were, we, could, we could categorize artworks as a painting, uh, a sculpture and a printmaking. But as for example, per se in, in contemporary art, there's a lot more than that. There's uh, installation, there's uh, conceptual art, there's uh, video art, there's uh, performance art, happenings and many more others, which if we try to grasp the ideas, the ideas of these artworks, it's important for us to see how, uh, how the ideas in contemporary art, anything could be freed uh, to be as an artwork and also consume to be as an artwork. And why is it important uh, culture and society has been put, uh, as in art history, we call it as the contextualistic uh, aspects or an analysis. Because uh, every artwork that has been produced by the humankind acquires uh, the material in a culture, whether it came from uh, the subject matter, whether it came from a material or a non-material, immaterial culture, which is the beliefs, uh, the religious and the values that you have is put upon the artwork and also the, the, the social attributes of the environment, I mean this, the society. So culture and society plays a big uh, aspects in the, the choice of the artist or the artisan in producing an art and also consuming an art. As what I mentioned before, uh, art is also, I'm not saying similar, but uh, you can say the idea was lit more or less about the uh, same like economy, which is the supply and demand. If you have uh, less, you have to have it equally important. I mean, if you have uh, less supply and more demand, then there would be a problem. If you have less demand and more supply, then eventually it would also be a problem. So the production and the consumption of art itself in the whole aspects of culture and society was, uh, was prominent and as important, it's vital for the process. And other than that, uh, some philosophers, uh, for example, such as uh, Frederick Hegel, uh, or Hegel, he mentioned also that history unfolds in a series of dialectical oppositions or uh, between the thesis and the antithesis. And frankly speaking, uh, the thesis it is, it could be the dominant side and uh, non-dominant side of anything the dominant side of a political system, economical system, social system, religious and belief system, uh, surviving system, uh, and the opposite will be the non-dominant. So uh, that which eventually resolves between these, the intertwine, uh, intertangle or the oppositions, dialectical oppositions, 
uh, intertwined between each other, between the dominant and the non-dominant, the thesis and the, and the non-thesis, and the antithesis, that eventually resolves and resonates to achieve a, a deeper synthesis, which he calls as the spirit of the time, or the Zaid case, or he calls as the freedom. And he also mentions that art as one of that freedom of beauty. I mean, the one that resonates and uh, I mean resolves from this uh, process is the beauty which is very concrete, being chosen by humankind from that uh, freedom imperative. And we can see this as a life will always find its way. Uh, this sort of a freedom is, I mean, is evidently, you can observe it. Uh, freedom is, the imperative, freedom imperative is a very biological and very natural. As example, if you have a seed, and even though you put that seed uh, inside the soil, uh, when it grows, it still will follow the sunshine. And even though you plant the seed and you plant uh, the plant uh, inside your house, it will still chase the sunlight. And then you will get, I mean, that coordinations of, I mean, the articulations or coordinations development of the plant, its stem and uh, the shoots and everything will follow the sunlight. That is one example of uh, the freedom imperative. I mean, however, you will, ha even though how you put humans or humankind, so humanity or society in chains of any system per se, political, economical, social, religious chains, uh, it will find its way out because uh, freedom itself is a part of freedom. The freedom imperative is natural to all humankind and uh, humans at large. And the philosopher, uh, Immanuel Kant, he mentioned in his book, The Critic of Pure Reason, one of his uh, earlier major books, uh, he wrote that nature does not volunteer any information about herself. What happened is that uh, we put nature on the rack and force her to answer our questions. So this is applicable both to arts and science. Uh, we put nature and interrogate nature. Uh, in a way, we interrogate nature. The way we make sense of everything happening in this world, I mean, the belief systems that we have, the social construct uh, of the belief systems and the representations of the science that we have today. As I mentioned in my previous uh, discussion, my earliest previous discussion, uh, was only made sense for humankind, the human species rather than the animal uh, species. Uh, as what I mentioned, David Jones said that uh, the two characteristics of the human behavior, which was the use and the sign, the use was more on the survival imperative. I mean, animals does not make sense on what is money and currency, what is, uh, I mean, uh, what is what is, it, what is it like being a citizen? What are the benefits and what are uh, the non-benefits? And what is uh, nationality and what is uh, identification card? They, they don't make sense of all these things as how we make sense. They don't see borders of lines of different nation lands, my lands being separated out of different nations, uh, different money, currency system, political system, social system, religious system being put upon. They don't look at it as what we look. They look at monies as piece of paper. If they see it as a paper, they look at the flags as uh, sheets of, uh, I mean, cotton or whatever it is. Uh, they don't make sense, but human makes sense out of that uh, freedom imperative. Uh, all of the cultures and society that we have is imbued or embedded or manifested in the in the flag, the art or the design of the flag, in the lines, the colors, and also the shapes. Uh, so that is one of the the contributions of artworks in society. It is not just uh, instrumental. Something uh, it's not just instrumental, which uh, which. Uh, acts as just an artwork to be viewed, to be appreciated, to be 
uh, I mean contemplate comprehend but it's also the story behind the unfolding victories of societies and humanity uh, on the verge of the freedom imperative okay thank you assalamualaikum